What's up everyone, Mariah here, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about the reasons why I quit alcohol for 140 days, and what it was like consuming alcohol for the first time after going without it for 140 days, what I learned, what I was surprised by, and what I would have done differently. Just to give you some background, this is the end of 2018, and I moved to Puerto Rico in April, and part of the culture and socializing and moving to a new place and making new friends, you know, alcohol became the center of that, and so I was drinking heavily, and I was going for the more sugary drinks in the beginning, thank God my friend introduced me to tequila, and then I just began drinking that straight on the rocks because I knew that if I was gonna be drinking that much, I had to get away from the sugar. So from April 2018 all the way till the end of July, I was drinking excessively. I went 30 days on a alcohol-free challenge. I successfully completed that while doing keto at the same time. I then had a trip planned with my girlfriends and uh, drank two consecutive days and then I have not consumed any alcohol since August 7th of 2018. So 140 days have gone by since I have been alcohol free. Just a few days ago, I consumed alcohol for the first time in 140 days and I am here today going to give you exactly what I learned and what shocked me. So I chose to just go back to the basics of what I know best and that is tequila on the rocks with a lime squeezed in there. You're probably making an ugly face right now because that's what everyone does when I order tequila on the rocks. Just to give you some background, I've always been the kind of person that could really handle my alcohol. Um, I would consider myself not a lightweight. Uh, I don't know if people call it a heavyweight or just someone that has a very high tolerance for alcohol. That would be whether I was drinking consistently or not drinking, I've always had a very high tolerance for alcohol. So on this night, I basically stopped eating at 3 p.m. and I started drinking at 8 p.m. And I just went with the basics to keep it on the rocks. I had one drink, waited a few minutes, had another drink, and so I was facing, I was probably drinking a shot of tequila worth every 30 to 40 minutes, I would say. It got to the point where I had approximately six shots of tequila, and that's what I had for the entire evening, and I expected to feel more drunk way sooner, but that was absolutely not the case at all. No matter, um, even though that I have not drank much in the past 140 days, in conclusion to losing approximately 40 pounds, as well as my meal that day had literally zero carbs because I've been doing the carnivore diet for the last 11 days, there really wasn't much to soak up the alcohol, but that didn't change things. I still have a very high tolerance for alcohol, so that was one of the shocking factors. I thought that the taste of alcohol would be shocking, surprising, like much different versus the last time I had it, just because it had been one, so long, and two, from my 54 day long fast, smelling things and the taste of things have definitely changed a little bit and there's some getting used to after that factor. So I thought that I was not gonna be able to tolerate the taste of tequila drinking it straight, but that was not the case. I think I was just born to be a tequila drinker. One of the most shocking things about drinking and the hangover aspect of it was, my plan going in was this. I was going to basically drink snake juice after my night out of drinking to see if that would help me recover faster because of all the potassium and the electrolyte factor of staying hydrated and keeping my electrolytes balanced. So what I did was I made a broth basically. I put all the snake diet ingredients into that broth. I do this typically every single day to begin with and so I made sure I had drank that as well. So after drinking the snake juice bone broth, and I'll go ahead and put a link below to uh, not only a, my page on Amazon where you can find all the products but also a video that shows you the recipe on exactly how I make my snake juice bone broth recipe. So I drank the snake juice bone broth. I had only slept two hours and honestly, the day after, I was shocked by how well my body recovered on such little sleep and after drinking as much as I did. So just to give you a timeline of things, the day that I started drinking, 3 p.m. was my last meal, a carnivore meal, so basically no carbs. I drank from approximately 8 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. and then I didn't get back home until 7 a.m. and that's when I had my breakfast and my snake juice. And then I didn't get to bed until 10 a.m. I slept two hours, woke up. I had energy, honestly, throughout the entire day. I was able to be productive. I actually had motivation, which is something that I've never experienced the day after drinking. And then I also had enough energy to even go to the gym at 11 p.m. So I thought that was quite fascinating how my body recovered so much faster than it has typically in the past, drinking the same exact thing and having more food in the process. Another thing that was really interesting that happened during this um, entire experience of drinking after going 140 days without any alcohol at all was that, just to give you a backstory, um, I did recently a 54 day long fast where I just had no 
food and only drink water and salts for 54 consecutive days. I'll go ahead and put a link below to the playlist where you can actually go watch day by day of my vlogging experience during my 54 day long fast. And so, Prior to my fast, I really had not had Taco Bell. When I was young, I was a big Taco Bell person, and I hadn't had Taco Bell probably since um, like June of earlier this year. And I never thought about it when I was uh, switching to the ketogenic diet. I never thought about it while I was fasting, and I definitely never thought about it after my fast, like in terms of craving it or wanting it. So what I, was really interesting was I was sitting on my computer doing work, and I was feeling, you know, some very mild signs of like the, my hangover, and the thought of Taco Bell came into my mind. Not just the thought of it, but like visualizing me actually consuming Taco Bell. And I thought that was really fascinating because I have not experienced that in the last few months. And I definitely think that basically like my hungover brain and state of mind uh, was triggered and basically thought about Taco Bell because that would be a frequent thing that I would eat when I was hungover all the time when I was drinking way too much. So the association there has not changed even though I haven't consumed Taco Bell in a long time as well as alcohol and I even went 54 days with no food at all. So I found that to be extremely interesting. So that just kind of helps me be more aware of my surroundings, where I'm at, and uh, creating basically an environment that I su can succeed in, in terms of uh, my health and wellness goals. So like I said, I, um, I drank that, that one time, and um, I don't know what my alcohol intake is gonna look like moving forward, but I do have some big goals to achieve in 2019. I know to get to those goals, I need to basically have little to zero alcohol. So what I learned in the process was, sure, yeah, you know, drinking is a good time and that will never change, but ultimately my priorities are bigger now than just having a good time. They are focused on my health and my wellness and feeling 100% and being my absolute strongest self. And so, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you have an amazing day and go out there and create a life you love.